Hey guys, um, this will be really quick. I just I wanted to answer something because a lot of people are misusing. Um, by the way, I'm getting accused of saying a lot of things I don't say. Um, I've only ever given you the real gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It is the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus, fulfilling scriptures. How dare anyone add any human work to that and think that what Jesus did isn't enough? It's a false, a cursed gospel, and I'll stand against it till the day I die. You rest in the finished work of Christ. I don't care your mind can't handle that grace isn't fair. Well, that means you can just do whatever you want. You know what? God's not mocked. If you get saved, you're going to pay the consequence for sin on this earth. That's what's going to happen. But he saves us all out of love he has for us. And he came and through one man's obedience, one man's righteousness, we're all saved. Just like through one man, Adam, we all die. Do you understand? But you act like what Jesus did didn't do anything. So anyway, let me give you this verse a lot of people are using out of context to try to prove you got to endure to the end. I've done a video on enduring to the end. It's about Jews living during the tribulation. And Jesus is saying, if you endure or survive, when I come back, you'll be safe. <laughs> physically. Physically. It has nothing to do with eternal salvation. I'm so sick of things out of context. And they do the same thing here in this verse to try to say, see, we're not saved yet. We won't know we're saved. No, we can know we have eternal life. And Christ is eternal life. And once he's in us, when we've trusted the death, burial, and resurrection alone, the spirit lives in us. That's why we're secure. Because we know it has nothing to do with us. If you could lose it, it means you did something to earn it. But you didn't. You're just trusting that he gave it to you. That's it. That's faith. God's grace through faith. Period. I don't care. Your mind can't wrap around it. Get over it. Spiritually discerned. If our gospel be hid, it be hid to them that are lost. And I did a video to say if someone gives you another gospel or, th or believes something is them, what they're doing, turning from sin or not not doing bad or starting doing good is helping them be saved, then you need to treat them like an unbeliever and give them the real gospel. Okay, now this is the verse they're always twisting. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. See, you don't have salvation yet. No, remember you can be saved from many things. This is talking about Jesus' return is closer than it was when we first believed. Why? Because another day has passed and he's not here yet. That's all it's saying. And by the way, this whole partial rapture thing is so stupid. You are either part, let me, let me, so let me say this real clearly. You are either part of the body of Christ or you're not. And if you're part of it, by faith, if you're trusting the death, burial, and resurrection alone, You've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I gave you that verse. In whom we trusted. After that we believe the gospel of our salvation. The foolishness of preaching is what saved us. By the hearing of faith we receive the Spirit. Remember? Paul said, did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? We receive the Spirit by the hearing of faith. And if the Spirit's in you, you are part of his body. He's not going to leave a foot and a finger here on earth. And don't you think it funny? All those people that love to say... Lukewarm Christians are going to be left behind. Uh, first of all, it wasn't lukewarm Christians. It was a lukewarm church. And Jesus was going to take away the lampstand. Their purpose, their anointing, had nothing to do with Christians being lost. Or them spitting Christians out of his mouth. It's garbage. If things have to be rightly divided. So I'm a little sick of hearing that too. Because they always think they're one of the good ones, don't they? Don't they all? You ever hear a Calvinist say, oh, too bad, I'm on elect. No, they don't. They all think they're specially chosen they say it's random and it's just his divine will but they really think there's something in them that makes them chosen you see it's the same thing with the rapture people that say only those that are really in their faith no lukewarms are getting taken they all think they're the ones living good enough for jesus to take them your righteousness didn't get you saved it's filthy rags why do you think it's going to get you rapture the rapture is part of the promise to god's people it is the putting on of a glorified body. We will all be like him, changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. It's to all persons in Christ's body. You are either in him or you're not, period. All right? So with that in mind, let's read this verse in context. Because it says, our salvation is nearer than it was when we first believed. Say you're not saved yet. Can't, can't say you're saved yet till you do. No, it's garbage. You can't. You can know you have eternal life. Why? Because you're believing the report God gave of His Son is that He gives us eternal life and that life is in His Son. Period. 
period people this doesn't make you want to sin more it doesn't make you want to grieve God more it makes you grateful and if your first thought is goody I can go sin away uh, you got more problems than I thought all right here we go and it says this is in Romans chapter 13 11 and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Okay, is that saying we're not saved now? Of course we're saved. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit into the day of redemption. Okay, saved. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the work of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. He's saying... The Lord's coming. Stand fast. We should be living for Him. Look, He's coming back for us. Okay? But, but but not to get raptured and not to be saved. Okay? He's saying do this because you are saved and because He promises that He's coming back. Alright? See, it tells you right there what that means. Our salvation is nearer than what we first believed. It doesn't mean our eternal soul isn't really saved yet. It means our saving uh, the fullness of our redemption. He's coming back to get us and give us a glorified body. That's what he means by this. It's clear right here. It tells you the night is first spent. The day is at hand. Okay? So that's what that verse means. And it's nothing to do with your eternal salvation. Okay? I just, I wanted to answer that because a lot of people keep sending it to me. Uh, nobody here has ever advocated a bunch of sin. I'm just kind of sick of that. They accused of Paul of that. I'm not Paul, but, you know, they accused, Shall we sin so grace me a man? You just get a license to sin. It's just so stupid. You know, no, honey, your works, you can't be prideful at all. And if you don't think that Jesus' blood was enough to wash you clean, then you need to get saved. All right? God bless.